Welcome to this week's Secure Work Cyber Chat. I'm your host for time, Microsoft MVP, Nick Cavalancia. And today I'm joined by Eric Escobar, Principal Consultant at Secure Works. Hey, Eric, good to be talking to you today. You as well, Nick. Yeah, now, for those of you listening, unless you've been hiding under a rock, I'm assuming you haven't, but unless you have, you're well aware of the continual growth in the, uh, the frequency, the sophistication, and the cost of ransomware attacks. And we've got today with the attacks impacting businesses of every size, every vertical, every geography, and even some really well-known global companies as recent victims, if you've been paying attention to the news it's evident that this is a problem that's obviously not going away. So in today's cyber chat, we're going to be discussing ransomware readiness and the proactive testing necessary that can strengthen your defenses. So Eric, um, again, thanks for joining me. Why don't you start by telling everyone listening a little bit about yourself and your role at SecureWorks? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've been at SecureWorks probably going on uh, seven, eight years now. And my role is truly the coolest job in the world. Uh, on any given day, <laughs> I try and breach our customers, um, all with the express purpose of showing them how the real threat actors, how the real bad guys will try and breach their organizations, their companies. Um, and it's, it's absolutely awesome. Every day there's a different client or sorry, different customer from a different, you know, uh, uh, business sector and um, everything's new and we get to apply everything that we learn um, all in the name of making them more secure. That's interesting. You ever see the movie Sneakers? I'm dating myself from oh, back yeah, in like the late 80s, yeah. early 90s. Okay. So you're the modern day version of that for those of you that are as old as I am. Sorry. So anyway, <laughs> uh, so let's let's talk about um, ransomware readiness. And I, I know I've been in cybersecurity myself for a, a large number of years. I find that organizations tend to focus a lot on establishing a security po posture that's more about sort of um, maybe it's about like detection and response. Certainly they're trying to prevent, but they're not actively preventing. And maybe they're just literally putting some solutions in place that are commodity, you know, those kinds of things. But there's a lot of this effort that's just simply put on sort of the detection and the response aspect. But I really want to talk about readiness, like the, really the, the prevention. And then even the, we both know that readiness also includes the having the right response plan and all that in place before it ever happens. So, um, you know, where, where do you see organizations first off, you know, in terms of ransomware readiness, let's let's talk about maybe testing a little bit later on. But just talking about how, when you go to these customers and you're talking with them and they're having you engage with them, are they really ready? You know, what does that even look like? What are you seeing out in the field? Yeah. So, oh gosh, I mean, we could talk about this for for hours and hours and hours. But but essentially, yes, um, you know, there's there's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of fear of you know if they haven't already been hit by a ransomware you know attack at some point in time. Um, you know, they're nervous about it because their friends from another industry have been or, you know, they've worked at a company that had been previously and then they see the nightmare fallout from from that. And, and it's not just the ransomware aspect of like you're unable to, to access your files, but there's that secondary aspect of like some of their data potentially has been exfiltrated and then, you know, was what is going to be sold off. So there's not even just the reputational harm of, of you know, not being able to access their data, but also the, hey, any of their sensitive information, their, their you know, PII that could be out there too um so there's a lot of fears surrounding that and there's uh you know and there's a lot of you know solutions that are they're kind of in place um but it's, it's all it's one of those things where they're they're just waiting you know waiting at the wall wondering hey when or if is this is this going to happen um and so just basically looking at it from that perspective and saying you know what how, how, what's the vector? How is somebody going to get in? And so that's what we see a lot is that there's there's uh, a lot of fear out there, a lot of unknowns out there, and a lot of like almost like the boogeyman um, is going to be out there to uh, you know try and try and somehow infiltrate your organization. Well, I, I, I'll, I think we can agree. This is somewhat a rhetorical question, but somewhat asking you, but rhetorical for the audience because they obviously can't say yes or no while they're listening. But I, I think everyone's going to agree, and this is my question to you, but everyone's going to agree it's a when and not an if. Is that fair, do you think? I mean, I know that it is, but yes, you agree? Um, You know what? I, I think maybe at the beginning of it, it would have been a win, but, but now there's, uh, you know, there are some organizations that have basically tooled that up enough to say this absolutely under no circumstance can happen. Right. Um, you know, and Love so, it. and so I don't necessarily think it has to be a win. I, I think at this point it could be an, if I, I would be comfortable making that. Perfect. <laughs> love it. So we're, we're, so we're, we're getting around the corner. I, I love that answer. That's a really fair answer. I'm glad you disagree with me because I, I sort of see it as most organizations are doing nothing, but I, instead of me being the, the doom and gloom, I love you being that. Wait, wait, hold on. If you, if you do it right, 
it's an if, and that's perfect. Yeah. So let's let's stay there. And uh, when I when I think about um, ransomware readiness, and there are organizations that are going, okay, I know how to put a defense in place. I buy these solutions, and it's a layered security strategy, and I have detection ready with all the multiple different ways, whether it's SIEM or EDR or MDR or XDR, or, you know, whatever. And I have therefore <laughs> an ability to respond. And I'm just throwing everything kind of you know everything in the garbage in the in the kitchen sink at you for a second here. Um, the the readiness plan I see in a lot of ways is a lot like, let's say, just a disaster recovery readiness plan where you're really doing like business impact analysis and risk assessment. You're trying to figure out what's it going to look like and where is it going to hurt if it hits? And then you sort of plan to go, how do we make sure that it doesn't hurt or it doesn't hit as the case would be? Um, so maybe we can start the question where I think the risk assessment's necessary. So how do organizations, how should they assess and test their security posture to figure out what kind of risk they have when it comes to ransomware? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, there's there's a couple different ways that they can approach this. Um, and looking at how critical your data is and what the risk is if it's not there, that's the first thing. Because, um, you know, if you have, say, terabytes and terabytes or petabytes worth of information, but that information is is, you know, uh, uh, going to go away at some point or, you know, it's just temporary information, you maybe don't need to uh, safeguard that in the same way, shape or form that you would want to have, you know, say financials from the past seven years or, you know, something that needs to be auditable or, you know, that that critical patient information. So um, first looking at what data you do have in place, what data is there and what um, is absolutely you could never lose this. And some of it where it's like, hey, if it were to, to go by the wayside, it's, it's not, you know, the absolute end of the world because it's only temporary. Um, and then when you kind of have a, a good handle on what your data looks like, your data that is there, um, then you can say, okay, now let's let's form a plan and form a, a backup strategy. Let's form a you know defensive strategy of um, what could you possibly do. And from the perspective of, hey, you have some critical data, make sure that it's backed up. Sounds super obvious, but you would be shocked how many um, you know how many different organizations out there or just individuals out there that they don't have a second copy of that data somewhere. And then um, when you're looking at your backups. Make sure that you have, you know, different versions on different medium. You know, don't make make sure that not all of your backups are just cloud backups. Make sure that they're on, you know, maybe just, uh, you know, something locally, um, even if that's going to be slower to recover. Um, and you just want to make sure you have a bunch of different versions of that data uh, because you never know where a threat actor is going to be able to essentially get in. Um, you know, I've, I've compromised several companies when we do like a, a ransomware, you know, resilience test. And I'll compromise their cloud backups because they're accessible from an administrator's account in the cloud. Um, but you know what I can access? I can't access the backup that is, you know, stored offline or offsite somewhere um, that they ship. And so just basically having a, a plan in place to say, hey, what is the worst case scenario for this data? Um, how are we going to cover it? What's our timeline that we need to recover it? Um, you know, if, if it's just financial data, maybe you can wait a week to get the financial data back. But if you have a factory that's offline because it's been ransomware, well, now you're losing money every hour that that, uh, you know, that that, you know, assembly line, that that factory line, that that facility is not online. So really, like, ultimately, the, the answer comes to it depends. It depends on your organization, your, you know, readiness that you need to have that data um, or just your operational, you know, setup and, you know, what happens if, if those systems aren't online. And just real quickly, um... It, it, um, you've, you've mentioned obviously two different sort of uh, impacts. If you use like the MITRE TAC framework, to be separate impacts. One being the exfiltration of the data, and the other one being the um, the uh, I'm going to say the extortion. That's the same thing. The exfiltration, the fact that it's encrypted. And it was another E. I couldn't get off my head. Uh, and <laughs> encrypted, the encryption of the data. And those are ones about accessibility and your business being uptime and available and resilience and all those kinds of things. The other one's just about I don't want the bad guys to ever get to the data. Do you see readiness as being different for those things? Because obviously at the end of the day that the threat actor has to just access the data then the question is what are they going to do with it but do you see organizations trying to be ready for those as separate things or is it really just for the attack as a whole um i think it's the attack as a whole because because at the end of the day if they gain access to that data um you know the way that they're going to gain access to it whether whether what they're going to do with it is one thing you know you might have um, you know, ransomware is, is one of those things that that's just the way that they monetize it. But it could be, you know, a, it could be a competitor in another industry that's coming in and just wants to see, you know, your secret formulas for whatever that might be. So really, you're trying to defend that entire, you know, your entire piece of your data. And so, you know, it doesn't matter if they mean, if they mean to like exfiltrate it and store it to, you know, to extort you for it, or if they're just trying to lock it up. At the end of the day, it's trying to keep 
uh, you know, a threat actor, an adversary outside of that core piece of, of information, that core piece of, you know, what they're trying to get at. And so if you approach it from that perspective, I mean, there might be a little bit of nuances here and there, depending on the industry, depending on the specific setup. But overall, it's defending that data, you know, from from all sorts of attacks. It doesn't really necessarily, um, l- you know, matter what it's going to be used for after the fact. So let's let's put some uh, practical pers- kind of pers- context on this. Actually, then um, yeah. we're talking about it kind of at a high level, all in in concept. But thinking about it practically, uh, you being sort of I'm going to put call you an ethical hacker for lack of a better term, but I, I think <laughs> you'll, you'll still appreciate that. You're laughing. That's good. Um, you know, like offended or something. And obviously, part of that comes pen testing. And organizations of, let's say, a certain size and certain maturity are already going to be doing some pen testing to some degree. But this is more than I I think, for example, if I was to think about the work that you do specifically, you're doing more than like just checkboxing like, okay, we did some pen testing and everything looks, you know, thumbs up. I'm doing thumbs up here in my (laughs) office. But, you know, it's how how does our or as our listeners sort of in think about how they would go about trying to see if their organization is at risk of being attacked by more than just checking the box, let's say with pen testing or any other measure that you want to mention here as an answer, but really testing the cyber defenses that they have. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, the, the answer that I like, you know, stiffen up and say, ah, well, we, SecureWorks has a penetration test option. It's called a ransomware resilience, where we come in and we, you know, uh, attempt to lock up your set of files and, and run you through a mock, a mock test. But really, the, the way that, that I think is, is like cheap and easy is walk up to any machine, any server, any whatever in, in your company, unplug it from power. Because now it's not available. What do you do when that machine becomes completely unavailable, when that host becomes completely unavailable? Um, and then who do you call? What is the process? Where is that information backed up? How quickly can you recover it? Um, so, you know, from, from a very corporate like, hey, this is what I do for a living, we offer that kind of a test, and that's it's awesome. I mean, it, it's designed to look at all of those different things. But from a, a real, like, you want to see how ready you are, unplug it from power and just see what happens, who screams, what does your process look like to, to recover it? Because that's really what this is here is something is going to go wrong, whether it is a threat actor, whether it is a failed drive, whether it is a corrupted database. And you need to be able to have a strategy in place to where um, you can have a backup in a reasonable amount of time. And reasonable is, is you know, completely dependent on everybody. Sometimes you need that highly available and you need it to fail over within seconds. Otherwise, you'll be able to stop processing orders. Sometimes it could be a day. Um, it, it really comes down to the organization. But, but really, at the end of the day, if, if you want to, like, test yourself and have it be super cheap, unplug it from power and see who screams, see what happens, um, and, and just go from there. But from a from the perspective of, like, this is what I do for a living, um, you know, go in, have have somebody who is as well-versed in doing this and is an actual ransomware threat actor come in and, and show you, you know, ways that they're going to evade your detection, show you ways in which they're going to, you know, sneakily lock up your file. So maybe, maybe they only lock up 10% of the file, which isn't going to, uh, it's going to corrupt the file, but it's not going to trigger any of the detection responses that, that some of the, um, you know, generic options on the market have for detecting where, detecting a ransomware, you know, spread throughout your organization. And sometimes they may not encrypt even in a full drive. Maybe they'll just encrypt um, only the the files that they really need, um, or you know the ones that are going to be the the biggest the biggest hitters. Um, so yeah, there's there's lots of it depends in there, but um, really ultimately, if if you're concerned about you, your organization is you know it best. You're an expert in your organization, and take that uh, and and apply that um, whenever you you know are thinking about this. Whenever you see and read something in the news, you know apply that to your own situation. Say, I wonder what would happen and how we would perform in that in that exact same situation. That's a that's a great answer because I think you covered kind of both sides of this. The unplugging the machine, obviously, sort of re- representing the okay, you've been attacked. Now go respond, and how well yep. can you respond? But then also this aspect of um, you know sort of is, is simulating a threat actor. But let me ask you, just diving into that because again, we're trying to help all the audience here with proactive testing to strengthen their defenses. Can you give me just even if you just list them? Um, give me five things or four things or some number of things that you think that the audience that's listening, you should test this, you should test that. Give me, give me like five things they should definitely be testing so they can feel like they're walking away from today with some practical advice on how to strengthen their defenses. Yeah, so um, this, this advice is going to be one of those things that if all of our clients did it, if it's ransomware, not ransomware, this is going to help you just, it's going to help your mom, it's going to help your Fortune 500, it's going to help anybody in between. 
make sure, you know, audit your password policies, audit your access policies. So uh, make sure you use strong passwords and they're different everywhere because those passwords are what safeguard that data, safeguard the access to those accounts. Um, the amount of times we've been able to breach companies through just weak password policy is, is pretty darn significant. Hmm. Um, and in the same way, you know, use multi-factor authentication for, for things, for everything, you know, anywhere that you can implement it. Because if I'm a threat actor and I'm able to compromise you from the public internet um, and you don't have multi-factor authentication, well, that's easy. I just need a password. Um, whereas, you know, if you had a multi-factor in place, I would need to have a text message. I would need to have push notification, some other form that would make it, you know, very hard for me as an attacker um, to basically get that, to get that option. And so while it's not the like, oh, this is like the, you know, the, uh, you know, crazy, cool or hard, like hacker mentality, those, you know, tried and true things work. Just like when you go to the doctor and you're like, Hey doc, you know, I need a, a diet pill to make me lose 10 pounds. It's like, or you could eat healthy, go on a job, you know, go on a run. Like it's not the, the cool, you know, advice that anybody really wants is like, Hey, good passwords, multi-factor authentication, make sure you have backups and a process in place. Anybody can do that today for free if they just invest the time into it. Um, but those, those, you know, tried and true practices really are what matter. And when, you know, companies, you know, companies, organizations, and even individuals, when they practice those, you know, good uh, security, you know, tooling and practices, um, that's really where, like, just doing the cybersecurity basics. And then, and then of course, you can, you know, uh, you know, as your organization grows, as your organization, you know, becomes more complex and they need to have uh, more stuff there, that's when monitoring comes in place. That's when monitoring of your files, your file servers, your Active Directory accounts, you know, is, is there a threat actor in your network? If there is, how can you, you know, ensure that you evict them in a certain amount of time and you can find out where they're coming from? So the, 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 first, op- the first answer that I have is, Everybody can do this passwords, multi-factor, um, making sure you have good backups in place. And then the second part of that is as you start to grow as an organization, make sure that you have monitoring in place. Make sure that you can detect somebody like me in your network as soon as possible um, because then there's going to be less time that I have to, you know, go go exfiltrate your files or to go, you know, lock up your files in place. That's a that's a, a good point here. I just saw a report the other day. I'm trying to think who it came from, but it doesn't really matter at this point because I can't find it. But it was, uh, I think, the average amount of time it, would, it takes to detect and remediate a ransomware attack today is like three weeks. And that's just on the average. And in some cases, it was a very high percentage that was many, many more weeks than that, where it was into the months just to fully remediate. So... Um, so that's that's really good advice because it is going to take a long time to detect normally unless they're actually looking for it proactively. So um, we've been talking today with Eric Escobar. He's principal consultant at SecureWorks. Thanks for joining today's SecureWorks Cyber Chat. We'll catch you all in the next one. <laughs>